Over the last year and a half, many of us have seen used car prices skyrocket to all-time highs. Used car prices across the board increased by 30 to 50 percent, and in some cases, used cars sold for more in 2021 than they sold for at MSRP whenever they were released new. And don't even get me started on new cars, which had massive wait lists and other vehicles selling for thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars above MSRP due to crazy high market adjustments placed on these cars by dealerships. Now, we saw the bulk of these price increases around this time last year in the spring, summer, and early fall of 2021. After the prices skyrocketed, they seemed to level out towards the end of 2021 into 2022, and that's kind of where they've been sitting ever since. And as we sit here today in the summer of 2022, though things are still far from normal, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that prices may finally be starting to go down soon. And today, we're going to be talking about why. So let's get started. Supply chain issues have been the norm for going on two years now, but what exactly is the issue here? Well, we of course have the pandemic and the trickle down effect that this had on industries across the entire world. And one of the most impacted industries by the pandemic was the automotive industry as well as related sectors. And there are a few reasons as to why the automotive industry specifically has seemed to be disproportionately affected by the pandemic compared to other industries. And one of these reasons is the fact that automotive manufacturers misjudge how the demand would be after the pandemic. They really felt like demand would decrease significantly. But of course, hindsight is 2020. And as we sit here today, we know that that isn't actually what ended up happening. And in fact, demand actually increased. But at that point, the damage had already been done and automotive manufacturers couldn't ramp up production enough to meet the demand needs. But it wasn't just the misjudgment on the supply and demand by the vehicle manufacturers that caused the automotive industry some issues. It was also the manufacturing of related components like rubber, semiconductor chips, and more. There are 30,000 different components in a car, and because of this, the automotive industry is oftentimes referred to as the industry of industries. And because of this, prices, efficiency, and the supply of vehicles depend on all of these other industries working properly. There were bottlenecking issues in a wide variety of different industries that the vehicle manufacturing industry depended on in order to manufacture their cars. And because of the fact that there was a slew of different issues that these manufacturers were dealing with, there wasn't one single issue that they could resolve in order to fix their production problems. There were simply too many problems to count, too many issues to resolve. And because of this, vehicle manufacturing has been incredibly inefficient the last two years. This has in turn caused vehicle prices to increase. But it wasn't just the pandemic or manufacturing issues in related industries. There were a slew of other problems that also attributed to the increase in car prices, including the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the Suez Canal blockage, wildfires in California, and more. And though these events certainly weren't as impactful to the automotive industry as the pandemic was, they definitely didn't help the situation either. But despite the fact that the last two years has been a logistic nightmare for the automotive industry, it does seem as though there may be a light at the end of the tunnel, and experts believe that things are actually beginning to get better. In 2021, the semiconductor industry shipped a record 1.15 trillion semiconductor units. This was in an effort to ramp up production, and this ramp up in production continued throughout 2021 and into 2022. Idling shipping container ships waiting at ports for entry have also decreased from over 100 at any given time earlier this year to under 40 in present day. And though auto manufacturing is to a degree at the mercy of their suppliers and manufacturing partners, automotive manufacturers still have gotten better at dealing with these shortages. And manufacturers are working around these shortages by cutting certain features out of their vehicles in order to keep production rolling. Things like heated seats, heated steering wheel, navigation, USB ports, and lumbar supports are some of the different features that have been cut from recent vehicle year models in response to these chip and various vehicle shortages. All of these things and more have increased the production of vehicle manufacturing. And don't get me wrong, we definitely aren't out of the woods yet, and we aren't back to pre-pandemic levels, but the more efficient that the vehicle manufacturing industry can be, the more cars that they produce means the supply and demand will be worked out and prices will go down. But production in vehicle manufacturing isn't the only thing at play here. The next thing that I wanna talk about is inflation, and the impact on inflation in the automotive industry today is going to be massive. Interestingly enough, for a while there, used car prices were in part to be blamed for the inflation that we saw at the end of 2021. 
In fact, in a report done last year by MarketWatch, it reported that the cost of living spike seen in spring and summer of 2021, about one third of that was attributed to the rise in cost of used vehicles. And though traditionally used car prices have a minimal, if any, impact on inflation, this isn't what we've been seeing over the last year. And though the affordability of a car has definitely had a heavy impact on our economy over the last year, the affordability of a car isn't our only problem. Our problem is the affordability of everything. Everything from gas to food to groceries to service providers have increased in price. Even McDonald's $1 for any size soda has succumbed to inflation and some franchisees across the country are raising their prices on the special. And according to a wide variety of different sources, the average American household spends anywhere from $250 to $400 more per month today than they did this time last year. And the effect that this financial squeeze has on not only the economy, but also the used and new car market is absolutely massive. People are spending more to live and thus they're not gonna have the money to buy a new or used car. The economy looks bleak, so people are less likely to buy a used car even if they can afford one because they're looking to save money. And even if somebody wants to buy a car, they may not have the ability to because everything is more expensive and they have less money in the bank each and every month. And that doesn't even begin to touch on the growing group of people that bought a new or used car in the last one to two years and are now falling behind on their payments because of this increased cost of living. And that brings us to my third and final point, which is repossession and auto loan delinquencies. Over the last few months, we've seen an increase in auto loan delinquencies. And this is especially true with delinquencies with subprime borrowers, which are borrowers with less than stellar credit. According to Equifax, in March of this year, 8.5% of subprime borrowers defaulted on their car loans. And this is expected to continue to grow and has continued to rise throughout 2022. Now, there are a few reasons why we are seeing this increase. First and foremost is what I mentioned earlier, which is inflation. People may have bought a car one to two years ago thinking they could afford it comfortably, but now that everything has gone up in price, they can no longer afford that pricey car loan, and thus they're falling behind. But that is just one piece of the puzzle. The larger piece of the puzzle is the increase in loan originations that we saw throughout 2021. You see, during the pandemic, loan originations or new loans being taken out on cars declined, and because of this, loan delinquencies decreased as well. But this decrease didn't last long, because just a year later, we saw loan originations absolutely skyrocket, and hundreds of billions Billions of dollars were lent out to borrowers throughout 2021, which you can see here in data provided by the Federal Reserve. But to make matters worse, it wasn't just a matter of loan originations that increased. We also saw an increase in subprime loan originations, which you can see here. Now, of course, to an extent, the auto loan industry is a numbers game, and the more loans that you give out, the more delinquencies that you'll have. And this is especially true with subprime loans. And one thing that I find particularly mind-blowing is the interest rates that are charged on these subprime and deep subprime auto loans. The average interest rate on a used car for subprime borrowers is 17.29%, and the average interest rate for a deep subprime borrower is 20.99%. It is honestly hard for me to even wrap my head around the fact that people pay that interest rate for a car. That is like credit card level interest rate for a car. And it's no wonder why a huge portion of these borrowers end up going delinquent on these loans. Now, the reality is these auto loan delinquencies are bad news for anybody with financial ties to these loans, whether it be the industry as a whole, lenders, borrowers, but I also think that it's gonna have a really positive trickle down effect for the average vehicle buyer. The more delinquencies we have, the more repossessions we have. And the more repossessions we have mean the more used cars in the used car market. This will in turn decrease used car prices, which is good for everyone. Now we've been saying this for months, the used car market has been in a bubble for the last year. And it's not a matter of if it's going to pop, it is simply a matter of when. Between the supply chain working itself out, the rising cost of living and the increase and delinquencies and repossessions, I think that we will see a dramatic shift in the used car market over the next few months and into the next year. All signs are pointing to the fact that prices are going to go down and the experts absolutely agree. If you guys are interested in checking out some of the sources that I used for this video, I will include them down in the description below. But like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave the comments down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video.